The world will certainly not end, but it will very dramatically change, as will also be the case in regard to the entire humanity itself and its existence. To what extent these dramatic, drastic changes become reality depends on how much the world population increases. On the front line of the elimination of nature, as well as the destruction of the flora and fauna, is the spreading of millions of tons of chemical poisons. Chemicals deposited in the food plants of all kinds are then eaten by the human being, leading him or her to become sick, waste away, and finally die. Valuable plants, animals, other creatures, lizards, insects, aquatic life forms, and birds are also poisoned and exterminated by these chemical poisons. Cattle, poultry, and all kinds of animals are treated with diverse antibiotics, which when eaten by the human beings are then again assimilated and create a resistance to antibiotics. Consequently, he or she can no longer be healed from diverse illnesses or can no longer be protected from infections. First and foremost, it is the users and consumers which are responsible. The farmers, gardeners, and all people who make use of all the poisons which are promoted to them through propaganda. In the second most important position are the producers of the chemical substances, through whose manufacture and consumption financially make billions in profit. There needs to be a drastic stemming of the worldwide overpopulation by means of a strictly controlled stoppage of births and a controlled regulation of births. Otherwise, a very terrible future is in store for the world and its humanity as a consequence of its globally destructive and irresponsible conduct. So-called experts claim with irrational assertions that the entire matter of climatic change is completely natural and normal. They do not perceive the effect of reality in regard to all the destruction and elimination to the world, its nature, fauna and flora, as well as to all waters, native forests and other forests, meadows, seas, wetlands, glaciers, landscapes and to the climate and so forth, which is caused by the boundless overpopulation. Developing countries are exploited without conscience and feloniously, predominantly by the well-placed big companies worth billions belonging to the rich industrialized countries. The human beings of the third world and developing countries, impoverished and made sick through the machinations of these companies, have no chance at all to defend themselves against it, because as a rule, the governments of those countries are so corrupt. By the year 2030, the Amazon rainforest will be irreversibly destroyed by up to 60% due to the consciousness and criminal logging of it. Already today, three quarters of the native forests in Asia are cleared and destroyed beyond recovery. Worldwide, there are around 125,000 square kilometers which are destroyed and eliminated annually. This destruction has devastating consequences for nature and its fauna and flora as well as for the climate and the oxygen content in the atmosphere. The elimination of the tropical rainforests alone contributes around 25% of the worldwide CO2 emissions. If the CO2 output in regard to the coming deforestation of the tropics is viewed and considered overall, then by the year 2100, 100 to 130 billion tons of CO2 can be expected to be produced. Of the 32 million species and kinds of plants and animals, more than two-thirds live in the native forests, whereby many of them are threatened with extinction or have already become extinct because of the felonious logging and clearing of the rainforests. Altogether, around 50,000 species disappear every year. 
It is possible that by the year 2100, 50% of all genera and species of all living organisms such as plants, animals and insects, etc. will be extinct. Expert calculations speak of approximately 30% of the amphibians, 24% of the mammals and 12% of the birds. Foreign species from other ecosystems are spreading themselves whereby endemic species of plants and animals are displaced and even exterminated. In Europe, there exists already very many plants as well as animals, all kinds of insects and other creatures which have been introduced due to globalization, whereby these, according to precise Pleiadian information in regard to all genera and species altogether, amount to a total number of 12,000. One invasive plant requires a special description. The giant hogweed, which grows up to 5 meters high, forms between 10,000 and 50,000 seeds which are even capable of floating. With human beings, it causes serious burns to the body when they come into contact with the sap of the giant hogweed. The sap of the plant contains so-called fuocumarins, which, in connection with sunlight, lead to second-degree burns. Increasingly, more extreme weather conditions will lead to further catastrophes, as well as to the loss of fertile land and to the immense pollution of the waters through chemicals, human and animal excrement, household waste, industrial waste, plastics of all kinds, antibiotics, and artificial fertilizers, etc. Also, the acidification of the seas and the use of pesticides, herbicides, neonicotinoids, and all kinds of other poisons, as well as the industrial and heating exhaust gases, and the emissions from cars and other combustion engines endanger and destroy the biological diversity. In the case of overfishing not being stopped, no commercial fishing will be possible anymore at the latest by the year 2050 because the seas and all waters will be absolutely completely fished empty. More than 1.5 billion human beings will be deprived of their only source of protein upon which their life depends. Too little, too late. By the time environmental pollution resolutions are applied into reality, 10 or 20 years have transpired. Our current population is growing at a rate of approximately 100 million per year, which means that these resolutions, once they have been implemented, are already very much out of date again. With an average increase of 100 million human beings per year, then by the year 2050, there will be around 12 billion human beings who will populate and torment the Earth. This is based on exact play hour and information which states that on December 31st, 2015, we had over 8.6 billion people on this planet. In contrast, Earth statisticians, who in the year 2015 start with only approximately 7.4 billion, believe that by the year 2050, only, only 9 billion human beings will populate the Earth. The World Trade Organization's advancement of the dismantling of trade restrictions has led to many countries undermining laws concerning the protection of the environment and consumers. Among other things, not only nature and its fauna and flora suffer, but rather also the climate and the entire planet as well as the human beings. Air pollution plays a decisive role as a result of which four million human beings die annually worldwide. Each year approximately 16 million human beings die of illnesses and indeed caused by the consumption of chemically and above all bacterially contaminated water as well as similarly contaminated foods. The drinking water becomes poisoned especially through chemical fertilizers such as phosphorus and nitrogen as well as through pesticides, herbicides, and neonicotinoids, 
which are introduced in horticulture, in agriculture, and in all kinds of plantations. The chemical substances reach the groundwater and thereby also into the drinking water cycle. As well, water will increasingly be in short supply based on ongoing droughts. With warm weather and in open bodies of water, which are also used as sources of drinking water, the explosion-like proliferation of cyanobacteria occurs, that is to say, the so-called algae blooms. The bacteria produces various toxins, which of course poison the water, so that when it is drunk, or it is used just for cleaning teeth or for cooking, it causes diarrhea, vomiting, and nausea, as well as dangerous damage to the liver and kidneys. Through the heating and boiling of the water, the concentration of the poison increases. As the production of garbage increases immensely and uncontrollably worldwide, and indeed especially in the industrialized countries, removal companies act criminally and irresponsibly in regard to the garbage disposal, and indeed by shipping the accumulating mountains of garbage into poor countries who have no way to deal with it. Plastic and other synthetic garbage is extremely problematic because these only completely break down after 100 to 700 years, depending on their kind. Especially this kind of garbage accumulates in the local waters and in the seas and already in the present time forms carpets for several square kilometers in certain ocean gyras. Death zones, which have come about as a result of enormous environmental pollution as well as through over-fertilization of agricultural areas with nitrates and phosphates and so forth, in the current time comprise more than 3,200 square kilometers worldwide. And indeed, additionally, these fertilizers are washed into the streams, rivers, seas and oceans and cause enormous damage in these by evoking gigantic algae carpets. Excess nutrients that run off land or are piped as wastewater into rivers and coasts can stimulate an overgrowth of algae, which then sinks and decomposes in the water. The decomposition process consumes oxygen and depletes the supply available to healthy marine life. Plants as well as aquatic animals and so forth which have died in the water need bacteria to decay, which require so much oxygen for their own existence that there is no longer enough of it for further aquatic life forms and aquatic plants. A curbing of the growth of the terrestrial population is required, indeed in the form of a worldwide effective and governmentally controlled regulation of births. And because this does not happen, the CO2 output will continue to drastically increase and probably double within the next 15 years, whereby inevitably more and more climatically conditioned natural catastrophes will appear and cause monstrous destruction. Since the oceans of the world are already thoroughly saturated with CO2, they will take up less of it. The atmosphere thereby becomes increasingly burdened and overburdened and damaging to the health of all life forms. Thermal discharge generated by human beings has a very harmful effect on the atmosphere and the climate. The arising higher temperatures which, for example, in the Amazon, incessantly cause more evaporation of the water than would normally be the case. Through the decay and decomposition of the withered trees and plants, carbon dioxide is released. A further result is the drying out of the soil, trees and plants, which has the consequence that wildfires produce tremendous amounts of CO2. Methane gas is around 30 times more damaging than carbon dioxide. It is also bound up in tremendous amounts in frozen sediments on the floor of the seas, from out of which it is released as a result of terrestrial movements and heat and so forth, and gets into the atmosphere. 
When it comes so far that the methane gas defrosts as a consequence of the warming of the ocean water, then that will lead to the average temperature of the world further drastically changing and climbing by up to 7 or 8 degrees Celsius. Great amounts of methane are also produced by many millions of livestock, by cows, cattle, pigs and poultry and so forth which serve as animals for slaughter for meat production in order to feed the humanity and its domestic pets with meat. At the present time, about 360 million tons of meat products are consumed annually by the terrestrial humanity, without including domestic pets. By the year 2050, this will increase to approximately 530 million tons consumed annually. The indisputable fact is that the emissions of carbon dioxide which have occurred until now, and which continue to tremendously increase, are to blame for the worldwide increase in temperature which, depending on these circumstances, can amount to 6 or even 8 degrees by the year 2100. Thereby, the fact is also that, with every degree of warming of the atmosphere, the tropical cyclones increase up to 35%. Pertaining to the existence of the humanity itself, a growing amount of catastrophic effects are appearing, and indeed especially in the form of the continuously increasing unemployment, the hatred of asylum seekers, foreigners, human beings, neighbors, and religions, and also in the form of energy shortages, floods of refugees, famines, new illnesses, and rapidly spreading diseases, water shortages and shortage of space to live, as well as growing organized crime and felony. The Arctic and Antarctica are affected by the increase in temperature. As a result, the thickness of their ice layers diminishes. As the consequence of overpopulation, then already in 25 years, the Arctic can be ice-free in the summer. The Arctic's ice surface once amounted to 7 million square kilometers. However, today it is only around 3 million square kilometers. This also means that the warming of the earth thereby increases all the more, because the fact is that the smaller the surface of ice, the less the sun's rays are reflected. A further factor of climate change and the melting of the ice is the rising sea level and indeed presently around 4.5 millimeters per year. Therefore, it is easy to calculate by the year 2100, the rise in the sea level will already have to be measured in meters. According to calculations, the rise in the sea level shall amount to around 45% due to the melting of inland ice, while around 55% of it shall be caused through the increase of temperature and the connected expansion of the ocean water. By the end of the 21st century, the storm tides in the North Sea will be up to more than 1.5 meters higher than today. With a rise of the ocean level of around a meter on the North and Baltic Sea, around 15,000 square kilometers of coast and hinterland will be flooded, whereby much of the land, which at the current time is inhabited and farmed by around 4 million human beings, will be below the waterline. The climate change also calls forth continuously more and more tremendous geological changes to the planet Earth itself, such as rockfalls, mudslides and mud flows as a consequence of the thawing of the permafrost as well as through extreme rainstorms. On the surface of the Earth and on the floor of the ocean there arise fissures in the Earth's mantle and consequently also great shifts in the Earth's mantle along with which continuously more gigantic primeval hurricanes and tsunamis will break out over the Earth and cause catastrophic destruction in nature and to human buildings of all kinds and also will cost many thousands upon thousands of human lives. 
The established natural laws will unravel and drastically change into new forms which will lead to new geological changes and natural changes, to which the humanity must inevitably adapt, or, if it does not do so, it will come to an end. The entire matter of adaptation also means that a worldwide stoppage to births must occur, and coming out of that, self-evidently, a global birth regulation. Otherwise, by the year 2100, the global raised temperature leads to bad droughts such that also the Amazon rainforest will be destroyed by up to 75% if the entirety of all destructions continue to go on in such a form as has been called forth through the overpopulation. It is now clear that the terrestrial humanity and its governments and all the ones in positions of responsibility will not undertake any kinds of measures in order to stop the growth of the world population. Therefore, the destroyed rainforest areas will become grass and shrub savannas or lifeless wasteland. Southern Europe and Southwestern USA, Southwest Asia, Sub-Saharan Africa, the Middle East, Wide stretches of Australia can succumb to destructive dry periods. New dry periods will also lead to gigantic loss of crops everywhere, which can no longer be changed. Uncommonly, gigantic floods will climb, for example, in the Western South Americas, as well as in New Zealand, in Northern Australia, and in the East of China. In the north of Europe, in Canada, and in South America, greater useful agricultural areas will emerge which will come about as a consequence of the climate change. However, this will result in foreign animals, birds, and all kinds of foreign land and aquatic animals from foreign countries acclimatizing and settling into these regions. Due to climate change, its effects, and the natural catastrophes, the damage, calculated in Swiss francs, will climb into the quadrillions. Worldwide, if the sea level climbs only around a half a meter, then the coasts, about 140 cities, with more than one million human beings will be threatened. But that scenario, which is to be expected, can go so far that even entire countries could disappear, such as the 1,200 islands approximately of the Maldives, because their highest elevation lies only 2.4 meters above sea level. The sea waters will advance ever further inland, and indeed both into the ground, which is farmed for the food production, as well as into the essential groundwater, which serves the human beings as drinking water and irrigation water for the fields. Corporations of the industrial nations will continue to exploit the resources of the poorer countries. When the coming droughts, which are spoken about, inevitably arrive, then the meager fields will dry out and even become completely infertile. Consequently, famines will increase. Water shortages will increasingly escalate, bringing death to human beings as well as to the fauna and flora. Lowering water levels that are also due will adversely affect ship travel as well as the hydroelectric power stations. In the future, if nuclear power stations are not shut down early for rational reasons, then they will have to shut down when the water shortages no longer allow water to still be squandered for cooling such power plants. Europe will have to suffer droughts as well as water shortages, whereby, however, also primeval storms and extreme weather events as well as serious floods will increase and in this regard cause great catastrophes, damage and destruction and cost many human lives. The average annual temperature will increase whereby, by the year 2100, it must be expected to be up 4 or even 7 degrees Celsius. And indeed, depending on how the further destruction of nature, its fauna and flora, and the climate change develop due to the overpopulation. Skin cancer will have a rich harvest as a consequence of the solar radiation, which will become ever more aggressive. And indeed, not only in summer, but also in spring and autumn. 
Chemical poisons which are spread on crops will bring about heretofore unknown changes whereby the human beings will increasingly become sick with allergies and gastrointestinal disorders. The melting of the Himalayan glaciers alone, which threatens in the future, will become a catastrophe for more than one and a half billion human beings due to the water shortages. In India alone, when the great droughts come, the continued existence of the meager agriculture will become a giant problem from which around 65 to 75 percent of the population will be immediately affected. But also in the north of China, as well as in other countries, areas of land will wither and become desolate, or other desert-like areas will continue to spread out. Thus, in the future, droughts, as also destructive floods, and all kinds of extreme weather events and earthquakes will drive many African, Central African, and Southeast Asian countries into national decay. In 35 to 50 years, there will be around 300 to 350 million refugees who leave their homelands as a consequence of the climate change and its catastrophic consequences, as well as the effects of negative and difficult political, militaristic, religious, and terrorist unrest and machinations. Intellect and rationality must be clearly and unambiguously called for and expressed, just as in the future all nations of the world must very drastically limit emissions worldwide as well as the exploitation of resources. All environmental pollution, environmental poisoning, and environmental destruction must be immediately forbidden and stopped. The rapidly increasing overpopulation must be stopped by very quickly introducing and carrying out a worldwide and federally controlled effective regulation of births. Only in this manner can the widespread human tragedy still abate, which menacingly looms on the earth human beings horizon of destiny and worldwide already brings drastic and maliciously negative as well as catastrophic and destructive consequences. The entirety of all current natural catastrophes is an urgent warning of the consequences of climate change. If that is not very quickly steered away from, the Earth will ultimately no longer be in the position of meeting even the most necessary requirements of the humanity. Consequently, the constant increasing demand for energy, food, and water can no longer be met. If nothing is done for the best, then the entirety of all machinations which have gotten very badly out of the control of the good human nature called forth by the overpopulation will lead to an inescapable, widespread human tragedy. Therefore, all nations of the world are called upon to grasp the now only small chance to avoid this tragedy. But that stipulates first and foremost that a controlled worldwide stoppage to births is put into effect and a worldwide birth control is introduced so that the overpopulation quickly becomes constrained and nature and its fauna and flora as well as the climate can recover again from all the destruction which has arisen due to the machinations. The time has long ago passed when lax, idiotic, useless and unserviceable international climate protection agreements can be passed because now intellect and rationality and a resolute, drastic, clear, useful and valuable action are demanded in order to finally still indeed prevent the threatening earth human tragedy of the future. <laughs>